If you're in the market for a new Zen 2 CPU, take for instance the Ryzen 5 3600, you may be wondering, do I need to go out and spend all this extra money on fancy gold bling 3600 CL16 memory, or can I get away with a bit of an in-betweener, say for instance some 3200 megahertz, or can I scrape the bottom of that barrel, which me nowadays, I kind of still do by choice, and get some 2133 MHz DDR4 memory and save ourselves a few bucks. Well, today we're gonna to be testing all this memory at different speeds and putting it on the Ryzen 5 3600 and seeing what difference we can extract in CPU bound games. Let's get the results up for you guys. And so now the results are in with these benchmarks. And what we saw straight away with the CSGO numbers was that as expected, the higher you go in memory speeds, the more performance you're going to get with the worst case scenario being 426 average FPS versus the best case scenario being 470 average FPS. The difference between 3600, however, and 3200 megahertz wasn't that much. I mean, we had CL16 versus CL14 and I'd definitely say, just based on these results alone, you would definitely want to go out and pick yourself the cheaper of the two. If you could get 3200 MHz CL14 on sale or CL16 3600 MHz on sale, I'd get either which is cheapest at the time. 2666 sort of is the in-betweener, so it definitely goes to show if you want to overclock some of your memory, then you'll get a bit more FPS, even if you're buying the cheapest stuff out there, which is what we did today with the 2133 MHz stuff. But moving over to GTA 5, we saw a similar trend. However, the results between the best and worst case scenario wasn't that big in this game. We had 149 FPS, then stepping it up to 155, then going to 163, and then 164 on the 3600 MHz stuff. Moving over to Dota 2, we did see quite a big difference, however, with the best case scenario being 198 FPS, and then the worst case being 173. However, it was important to know that the 1% and 0.1% lows through these three games was absolutely fine on all the four different configurations here. And then the next gaming benchmark we're gonna show you is something a little bit weird with the Ryzen 5 3600, and that was when we just took one stick of memory out and ran it in single channel. In CSGO, we got 469 average FPS with 3600 MHz CL16, and then 122, 1%, and then 93.1% lows. So it goes to show that at least with the Ryzen 5 3600, you'll definitely wanna focus on getting your memory speeds up to tune so you can get the best performance in games. Even if you're on a budget and you can only afford one eight gigabyte stick of memory at this particular time because that's what the CSGO numbers were showing. Maybe I'll have to do a separate video looking at single versus dual channel on Zen 2. But moving over to some productivity numbers now, we had Geekbench showing pretty much a similar trend just like the gaming scores where the 3600 megahertz came out a little bit ahead of the 3200 CL13 and then 2666 being the in-betweener and 2133 coming in last there. And then moving over to V-Ray, we virtually got no difference between the four different memory speeds. And then the GPU utilization test showed 47 seconds across the board, except for 3600 megahertz, which managed to shave off one second. And then last up here, we had 7-Zip, which showed a difference between 3600 megahertz and 2133. And then the in-betweeners did quite well on both the compression and decompression. So now with Zen 2, if you're gonna go out and buy that six core for 199 bucks, couple it with a budget motherboard, whether it's a B450 or even an A320 like we tested here on the channel, you want to get some good high speed memory, whether it's 3200 megahertz, even CL16, or some 3600 CL16. 3200 megahertz, of course, the Samsung BDI stuff at CL14 will make a difference on the Zen 2 CPUs versus the cheapest stuff you can go out and get, and that's the 2133 megahertz. But rest assured, even when we tested things at 2666, we saw that you're going to gain benefits even if you get the cheapest stuff and overclock it. And that's the most important thing going into Zen 2 and the new Ryzen 3000 chips 
is that you're going to want to definitely tune your memory, whether it's overclocking or just getting some good stuff that has some good XMP profiles already locked in. And it's pretty simple to do this, especially with the XMP profiles. You just go into your BIOS and then enable the XMP profiles. But I find even on a lot of the X570 boards, it'll actually enable these XMP profiles for you by default. So that's really all there is to it with Zen 2 and memory speeds. Definitely get the best stuff you can afford and that's going to make a difference in games and also make a difference in productivity depending on the application. But more so in games, we saw a strong correlation where it's always going to make a difference and give you better FPS regardless of the game. And with that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and I'll see you in the next video very soon. But also with that said, let us know in the comment section below, have you found any weird things going on with Ryzen memory speeds and the new Zen 2 CPUs? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll catch you soon. Peace out for now. Bye.